everybody. Um, what we learned from complementary medicine physicians for a review article on the HPV vaccine. So I come from Switzerland and data from Switzerland shows 25 to 50% of uh, survey respondents state that they have used complementary and alternative medicine CAM in the last 12 months. However, only few studies have looked into providers of CAM and their patients uh, as regards vaccine hesitancy. So we have a national research program on vaccine hesitancy that is running for four years. And our key hypotheses are if we want to understand vaccine hesitancy, we need to gain access and talk to vaccine hesitant persons. And these persons will cluster around CAM physicians. So we have included three Swiss CAM physicians in our study. They participate in our research meetings. They help us recruit additional CAM physicians in Switzerland. So our mixed methods research program includes qualitative and quantitative research regarding childhood vaccines and the HPV vaccine. And why I'm telling you this is the, this research background um, is supposed to serve as an appropriate background for planning and implementing interventions designed at improving vaccine communication and counseling among physicians, parents, and adolescents in Switzerland. And another set of hypotheses is if um, in order to improve vaccine communication and counseling, we should and we can learn from CAM physicians because the patients who consult them are likely to be happy with the care they receive and the communication style of those CAM physicians. And we believe that CAM physicians may prefer different information sources and a different uh, communication style from that what public health authorities have to offer. So we uh, recently wrote two HPV review articles, not for any scientific journals, but for journals that are actually read by GPs in Switzerland. And we included these two CAM physician, uh, physicians who practice anthroposophical medicine as co-authors. So this is a recent publication by the Swiss Public Health Authorities entitled, as traditionally is done, the vaccine against HPV is safe and effective in French and in German. And what our CAM physicians tell us is that uh, vaccine hesitant CAM physicians are unlikely to read such articles anymore because this is how vaccine articles have sounded, quote unquote, for many years. Uh, CAM physicians apparently are fed up with such enthusiastic pro-vaccine, quote unquote, government propaganda. So they told us, if you're going to write an article, change the title. Uh, uh, declare in the title that you are interested in a well-balanced and individualized fashion of vaccinating uh, your patients. And consider the following nuance. Instead of saying the HPV vaccine is safe and effective, say it is considered to be safe and eff effective by the authorities. And they also say a plus of our article is that it is not written by government authors that everybody knows. Um, many physicians are not convinced that HPV vaccine is necessary. Also among physicians in Switzerland, coverage is about 50%. So the CAM physicians recommend it to us. Uh, again, it doesn't help to begin the article with enthusiastic vaccine efficacy statements. And the other thing we shouldn't do is instill fear to justify the vaccination. So for example, don't begin the, vac the article with statements that emphasize cancer, the grave consequences that HPV infection can have. Rather, we should emphasize uh, the positive that HPV that infection is transient in the majority of cases, that uh, cervical di dysplasia spontaneously regresses in more than half of cases, and we should emphasize that HPV vaccine is different from other vaccines. We should emphasize that uh, there is protection not against an infectious disease, but against dysplasia and cancer. And so we uh, included some um, algorithms and, and pictures about this. Regarding the statement, uh, you know, positive efficacy statements such as dental warts have essentially disappeared in countries like Australia where high HPV vaccine coverage was achieved early on. Or because HPV vaccine prevents dysplasia, we should not wait with recommending the vaccine until 2020 when data on actual cancer prevention will be available. 
So the CAM physicians told us, sorry, this sounds awfully like propaganda again. Your article already contains enough good arguments in favor of a vaccine. You don't need such very enthusiastic statements. As regards safety, we mentioned the WHO safety update from last summer that there is no signal of any association of the vaccine with autoimmune diseases now that 270 million doses have been administered. So the CAM physician told us this statement sounds uh, fine, but it, it, might, it might actually have a counterproductive effect. It sounds like you're minimizing and belittling case reports that suggest such uh, um, associations with uh, autoimmune disease. Such case reports should not be overblown, but it is equally wrong to dismiss them as useless evidence. So they would not dismiss such case reports either as just being internet hysteria. Your article will be more credible if you give these case reports some quote unquote space. Uh, for example, mention these cases as being very rare, but not impossible. And uh, in addition, they're mechanistically plausible because vaccines may, like common infections, trigger pre-existing auto autoimmunity. And they also wanted us to remind readers that these large phase four safety studies are financed by the manufacturers of the vaccines. Um, so in terms of uh, communications, uh, communication of vaccine safety, they said consider saying something like, the question of safety is key to all prevention measures in particular because HPV vaccine will be given to all young and or should is supposed to be given to all young and healthy persons, but only few will actually benefit from the vaccination given that overall HPV associated cancers are rare. And rather than saying that large studies do not show any evidence that vaccine causes, the vaccine causes any uh, serious long-term harm, it would be better to state Again, you know, case reports are there that suggest possible associations with multiple sclerosis and other uh, uh, grave diseases. However, large epidemiological studies have not been able to confirm such case reports, such associations. And some other recommendations were, uh, you should continue to emphasize, emphasize the need for safer sex measures. Many CAM physicians think that HPV vaccine should not be given uh, at age 11 to 14 years like the authorities do because those children are too young for safer sex counseling. It would be preferable to wait another two or three years when those kids are actually ready for uh, serious uh, safer sex counseling. Doctors reluctance to do safer sex counseling according to our uh, CAM physicians is the main reasons for poor vaccine counseling and contributes to vaccine hesitancy. And they also wanted us to emphasize uh, a, or include a best assessment of the durability of vaccine protection because hesitancy towards the vaccine also has to do with the fact that you vaccinate now, but the cancers that you're trying to prevent appear only many, many years later. And another uh, element that they were very happy that we were willing to put in our article was that we emphasized that doctors and patients are free in their decisions to vaccinate or not. So we said something that I actually like also, now that I read it, it is important to emphasize that vaccination remains voluntary in Switzerland. We don't have any mandates. And then this sentence, I also like good health and a relation of trust with their physician is possible for parents and adolescents with or without having been vaccinated against HPV. And then we had this kind of algorithm where you see at the top, this is in German, I'm, I apologize. Um, do, does the adolescent, does the, the parent wish the vaccine? And on the right side, you see an arrow going down. And you know, when the answer is yes, I want the vaccine, you vaccinate. And the CAM physician says no, the physician said no, take that out. Even if the parents or the adolescents have no questions, you still have to go the, the uh, you know, you have to go to the left and ask them uh, what their concerns are. So they say giving a vaccine is like conducting, you know, doing an operation. You have to obtain informed consent. You cannot just operate on the patient because you know they want the operation. So interestingly, we had uh, discussions with other authors who actually recommended the opposite. They said, well, if you, if you start talking to parents or adolescents about concerns that they don't have, you can actually make them more vaccine hesitant. 
So that's very interesting. So thank you to the whole team, and thank you to Suzanne.